Indexing a value in a matrix is relatively straightforward. Say you've got some kind of matrix. Let's just start with an array, actually. So say I have an array that looks like this. You've got a nice little matrix here that starts like that. Um, if I want to know what the first element in that array is, it's as straightforward as just calling A1. And that'll tell me if I want to know the third element, that would be 1, 2, 3, that'd be number 6 comes back tells me 6, so that's great. I can actually change values in the matrix like that. So if for some reason I've got this set up and I decide, oh, for some reason I want to change that value to 65 or 5. Now all I have to do is say, okay, take A3 and turn it into 65. And it does that. So that's kind of fun. You can index values in a matrix like in, a, in an array like that. It's not any different for doing it in a matrix. So, and then, so think about, let me make these numbers a little different so they're not all threes, it's just easier to hit threes. Um, so if you want to, say, get to this number here, you have to think, okay, I've got to look at the rows, and then I've got to look at the columns. So to get to the rows, I, it, blah, blah, blah. whenever you access an, a matrix element, you always think B. Um, row and then column. So I would say, well, I want the second row and then the one, two, three, fourth column. So second row, fourth column, that should give me the seven, which it does. So that's pretty cool. Um, actually, it's kind of neat. If I have a matrix and I just say, give me the um, eighth element, I don't want to do that. Let's say, give myself the seventh element. If I just say B at 7, it's actually going to give me 5. And you might say, well, how is that the case? And you say, well, actually, if I count, remember that the MATLAB thinks in columns. So if I think in columns, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the seventh element of that matrix is actually 5. So um, if you think about what element this 2 here would be, if I wanted to access the 2, there's two different ways that I could get to the 2. I could either say first row, second column, or I could say, give me the third element of the matrix, because it'd be one, two, three. So that's kind of fun, kind of fun something you can do. Um, if you want to get more than one element, though, that's when the colon operator becomes really, really awesome. So I'm going to use this B again. So say I want to the first row only. So this is actually kind of cool. I can use a colon operator. I can use a colon operator and I could say, so remember again that it is um, row column. So I could say for B, I want the first row, but in order to get the first row, that means I have to take all the columns. And to get all the columns, I can use the colon operator to say all columns. So it actually gives me the first row, all columns. Um, if I wanted the second second row only, I could say, give me the second row, all columns. Kind of makes sense? So the colon operator in MATLAB is kind of reserved as a give me everything part, I guess. Um, if I want to pull the first column only, then how would that go? Think about it. If I want to pull the first column only, then which rows do I want? We say, well, specifically, I want all the rows, but I just want the first column. And get all the rows, but just the first column. You can actually use the colon operator, just like you might remember if we wanted the numbers 1 through 5, I could say x goes from 1 to 5, and it gives me that. Yes, x goes from 1 to 5, and it gives me that. So I could actually say I want the, I want all the rows, but only columns one through three. So I could say I want, remember it goes rows first, so if you say I want all the rows, it'd be bam, I want all the rows, but then I only want columns one through three. And that's what that gives me. It's kind of cool. Um, I want all the rows, but only columns three through five. So see if you can type the code that does that. I want all the rows, but only columns 3 through 5. It's 
So again, give yourself a, a chance to actually learn this. Pause the video, give it a shot. With all the rows, columns three through five. Good. Um, one more, let's do I want all the rows, but only columns one, three, and five. That one's a little weird. So try it out. See if you can figure it out. Pause the video. Try to learn. This whole active learning thing is important. Um, I want all the rows. So you want to think about how would I get 1 through 5, and hopefully at some point you get 2. Well, I want to start at 1, I want to skip 2, and I want to end up at 5. So that's kind of pulling back from some stuff that's been done previously. Finally, the last thing that you can do, and I'm going to recopy my stuff. Um, and if I have this here, I can actually use n, so I can say, give me the first row, the last thing in the in the column, the last column, and I think that'll work. Yeah, that gives me the first row, the last thing in the column. I can say, give me the second row, the last thing in the column. I could say. Um, See if you can figure out how to say, so I'll write what this is. Ah, come back. So that's that one. Then we have second row, last column. Um, let's try doing, I don't know, um, last row, third column. Could do last row again whenever I'm pausing it's because you should like pause the video and try to figure it out on your own last row because rows always go first third column last row third column what if I said um, fourth column last row make sure you got that one this actually will trip people up because they'll immediately want to go fourth column last row but remember we do things in the order of rows and columns so you always want to rewrite it in your head. Last row, fourth column. So last row, fourth column. And you got it. Um, last row, last column. And, and, and in fact, you could just say, and, oh, except to type it right, and then it'll work. You could actually just say end, and that would go right to the bottom of it. That's about every way that I can think of for the moment to access a matrix quickly and, and easily.